I've cared for a lot of patients that have, uh, have died and very, very sick people. And, you know, that's, that's your work. You go, you go to work, you treat patients, and you just keep that, you know, part of your life separate. Uh, if you don't, it'll destroy you. In, uh, in medicine, we tend to uh, compartmentalize. And uh, um, it's hard to keep that compartmentalized. Give me a minute. <laughs> Sorry. So let me see if I can put this in context for you. Um, what happens is you have a defective DNA coding sequence. And that, that coding sequence, those alphabets in the DNA, uh, are translated into a protein. If that coding sequence is not properly designed, and uh, what, what often will happen is no protein will be made. Or if the protein is made, it's defective. It's not folded properly or it just doesn't function. In myotubular myopathy, that's exactly what happens. So the, the way that uh, scientists have developed treatments, they've taken uh, harmless viruses. In, in this case, they've taken an adeno-associated virus, or AAV, which is a a normal virus that's in our environment and turn it into a vector. So a vector is nothing more than a molecular taxi cab. So imagine if you would a little taxi cab that is carrying a normal copy of uh, MTM1, that's the gene, and is delivered to the cell and the doors of the taxi cab open, that normal MTM1 gene gets out of the cell and begins to produce through the cell machinery, myotubular and protein. It's like, it's like your car needs a spark plug. Everything else is fine. You plug in the spark plug and the car just fires up. Because of the time after treatment, when the dogs, as you've probably seen in the movies, when they just get up and walk, it doesn't take long for them to take this new part, plug it in the right place, and the muscles just starts to function. So if you couple the effect we've seen in the dog to these boys confined in wheelchairs, you can't help but ask, is this a stand up and walk moment? This may be the most important thing I ever do as a scientist. Apparently he likes to pee on people, so. <laughs> We've now observed these dogs on a yearly basis, really for over four years, and they remain healthy and robust. We expected them, without treatment, to perish by you know, four months of age because of the, of the disease. They would die at about 20 weeks, and we treat them at 10. And that was mostly driven oh by us being a little risk averse, because right now, at the experimental stage, the gene therapy is so expensive. We did not want to administer a very expensive batch of gene therapy and then have the dog die. 